but I don't think that the Carolina Bays were formed during the Younger Dryas. I don't uh, think. Why not? When, so, do you, when do you think they were formed? So, well, okay, so there's two main hypotheses for how these Carolina Bays formed. Uh, one is is at the Younger Dryas, and, and one of the main proponents for that is uh, Antonio Zamora. He'll be at uh, the Cosmic Summit with me this this summer. We're actually going to uh, present together. Um, kind of, kind of. Let, are you gonna are you gonna be there this summer? I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, if you can't make it, it's, it's gonna be to. a great time. Yeah, we had a good time last year. Yeah, it was fun. Um, anyway, so uh, Antonio Zamora and I are gonna be there um, together next year, and his main thing is that these things happened at the Younger Dryas, and he's got evidence. But a lot of the evidence is dependent on the Younger Dryas being proven correct. Uh, you know, things like the the mega mammal extinctions and things like that. That's where mm-hmm. he's you know and. Um, so that so he's he's got that idea twelve thousand eight hundred years ago twelve thousand nine hundred years ago that there was an impact into Michigan and it was big chunks of ice that came flying out of uh, Michigan and as they came cra- they actually went up into suborbit uh, froze solid and then came crashing back down and these uh, ellipses are actually the cone uh, the the cone of depression as as the ice re-entered the Earth there and so they come crashing back down the the violence of an of an impact like that uh, even a vice because we're talking about so it was raining that's his football stadium sized chunks of ice can of fields coming down onto the coastal plain of of of, jeez north america Mm -hmm. yep um and a lot of these a lot of these chunks of ice had rocks frozen in them right because that's what randall randall talks about these giant boulders that are in the midwest that are that come from came from canada or the mm -hmm. east coast yeah yeah they came but those 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 came rafting down out on you know from from valleys and things like that and it came rafting down Uh, onto those those areas and then so then that ice big chunks of ice that that uh were carrying these rocks that melted and then you were left behind with these with these um Mm. big uh these big rocks just kind of hanging out everywhere um i'm not sure because we're talking about in the middle of michigan there was probably a really big sheet of ice there mm-hmm. uh and the only analog we really have for that now is either greenland or antarctica and when you look at pictures of like greenland and antarctica you don't see a whole bunch of rocks laying around they're on the bottom but it's almost i mean you have like a mile of just white ice right you know, all the way up to the top mm-hmm. and and i think that this because I, I do agree with antonio's like impact hypothesis i do think that there was an impact into the ice and that it did eject the ice away from that location they went up and then came crashing back down mm-hmm. I don't think they were quite as solid as he uh, hypothesizes. I think that this, because because glacial ice forms differently, anyways. It doesn't form right. like you take like ice and put it into an ice, you know, into the freezer and it freezes solid. Um, glacier ice is forms when you have like annual snows that just pile up and then they get squished down. They get piled up and they get squished down. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. And so it, you create what's called a fern, F I R N, uh, and that's that's when. Um, uh, all that snow just builds up, gets squished down, uh, and it's, so it's globular. It's kind of like plasticky, uh, and then it eventually turns into um, turns into glacial ice. Uh, so it's already it already has like forgiveness. It like bends and it molds and it, okay. it has like I use the term plastic because that's the term that that's right. a geologic term, but it it molds and moves around and and um, so if it were if there was an impact into that ice, it would behave differently. It's already under pressure. It's already you know it, it's already globular and so i think that would be highly fractured and they would send out and you'd have these like globs of of frozen debris coming crashing back down Mm -hmm. um and it would be highly fractured. so i think when they came crashing back down uh that they that's kind of what formed that ellipse that's why they're so shallow like i said when you look at images of these there they're super shallow in the center of them uh and it's because i think that that stuff came down just kind of crashed out and and that's that's what gave you that that um ellipse with the raised rims Mm -hmm. um Again, he thinks that they were solid and so that they were actually entering the ground and it was the cone that creates that. And then there was viscous relaxation where the, the, the earthquakes caused it to shake and, and, uh, and settle back out. Oh, um, uh, okay. Yeah. So the, earth, so the earth shaking made these things perfectly round? No, 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 no. The the impact. So, so again, we have a paper right now that we're trying to get pushed through, but uh, it's the, the cone of, of uh, what's you call it? The... Um, Conic section. So, so we have different conic sections when something enters a, a uh, an unconsolidated material, which is right. mostly sand and clay and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so, whenever the object enters the flat plane, it creates a cone. If they were coming straight down, the conic section would be a perfect circle. If they're coming in at an angle, which these would have been, the conic section would be an ellipse. 
if you keep going, you'd end up with like a hyperbole and, you know, you end up with these, there's like four different conic sections. These are all elliptical. We think that they're cones of depression coming in at an angle. Ah, I see. Right, right, right. <clears throat> okay. Um, and again, I do agree with that. The, the, mm -hmm. the physics backs that up. Right. Yeah. So here are the cones of depression. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Again, you can see the where the ellipses are. They're at an angle. They're, they're entering the, the plane at an angle. Oh, I see. Look at that. That is fascinating. So again, you know, if you imagine something entering into that flat plane, mm -hmm. the the you know the cone itself is is the is the um, object entering in, and then it's mm. it seals itself into that into that terrain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's amazing we can't figure out how to get like some sort of big drill out in the middle of those things and just drill down well, for like like a couple I said, miles. we we had okay, so there's a couple things. One, we had heavy equipment, like we had a a bull uh, a a front end. What do they call that? The front end loader, an excavator, or whatever. But yeah, um, and and we dug as far as that thing went down, and it started filling up with water. Uh, we got as much, you know, because you hit the water table too, and so the water just started filling this whole thing up. Right. We got as much sediment as we possibly could. Um, you know, we, we kind of know where the apex would be. Like we kind of know where you should probably dig. Right. Um, but you know, we, how far do you dig? We don't know. Like I said, I don't think that these things made it all the way down to the, to the focus point of that ellipse. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think they went all the way down. I think that's something, you know, I think that whatever happened caused it to, um, to dissipate the energy and, and then, you know, you still end up with the cone of depression, but the energy is dissipated because right. of the mm -hmm. material. But um, so when do you think these things were from again? Okay, so <laughs> so the other hypothesis that I that I'm looking at is um, Michael Davies, the guy who who did all this lidar. Yeah, um, he thinks that these happened um, during the mid Pleistocene transition. The uh, mid Pleistocene. Yeah, the transition. mid Pleistocene transition. Now this is a lot longer ago, seven hundred eighty six thousand years ago. This is the mid Pleistocene transition is a real thing. Like it's we basically <laughs> have a chain of events that completely changed the earth. Um, literally before the mid Pleistocene transition, uh, we were going in and out of ice ages like every 41,000 years. And something happened right around that time that caused a change in obliquity of the earth that caused the uh, the ice ages to stretch out to 100,000 years. And we have this recorded in, in ice, ice core data. So we started going from, we were going for 41,000 years, going in and out of ice ages, to now going 100,000 years in and out of ISIS. And I'll show you a graph here in a little bit where, where you can see that. Um, so, I mean, a change in obliquity is kind of a big deal. Because that's, right. that's one of the Milankovitch cycles, right? You've got precession, um, obliquity, and eccentricity. So it knocked, this thing knocked the Earth off its tilt? Listen, I'm not, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's the idea. I, I think it could be the idea, yeah. I think it could be, yes. Jesus. Um, I mean, something happened. Something happened to cause the Earth's obliquity to change, to stretch out our ice age cycles. We also find all kinds of other evidence. Um, we find um, a big one for me, uh, and you kind of mentioned this a minute ago, uh, whenever an impact hits the ground, uh, it, it's going to send up melted rock or melted parts of itself. Uh -huh. and, and, and so it melts, and, but it sends these, these um, they're called tektites. It's kind of like meteorites, but they formed from the ground, from the earth. Uh, and we find AA tektites that date back to 786,000 years, that date back to the mid Pleistocene transition. And it's a mystery. They don't know where they came from. Where do they find them? They those? find them all over Asia. They find them all in, uh, in Australia. That are 800,000 years old. 800,000 year old tektites. Yeah. And they're found, I, I was just, you know, you can go look up tektites and, and they find them all over the place. Um, they, um, and again, they don't know exactly where they came from. Uh, now, one of the guys, uh, there's different types of tektites. That's, that's a good example of one right there. Mm. Um, that was probably an A tektite found probably in, in um, the Philippines or something like that. Wow. Um, but it's, there's a huge strewn field where, where you find these things. And most of it's actually in the ocean. Like most of the strewn field is actually under the water. And so there's right. a ton of tektites <laughs> that are still there. Um, they do, yeah, this, I think I just saw this uh, just the other day where they found, they were just finding like dozens of them. 800,000 years old, just chilling right there on top, yep. of, the, on top of the dirt. Yep, yep. And it's really, they're really kind of neat because they, they actually show the, they were melted, they were flying through the air when they solidified. How do they actually know it was 800,000 years old? Uh, it's from where they find them in the strata, like where, like. Yeah, that was just sitting on top of the dirt. Well, that dirt's been eroded away. They find them in other places that are in in that location. Another thing that they've done is they actually there's a guy who has tested those uh -huh. uh, with um, strontium and rhodium uh, dating. Yeah, 
and and they date back to well actually let me rephrase it because they date back to the rock layers being jurassic of age um but that's not when they're formed like the rock that formed the sand zones that formed them were jurassic age rocks uh but they that's what formed the tektites what's interesting is if if we look back at the uh the michigan basin the center of the michigan basin right here this pink rock right there uh -huh. that's all jurassic age rock and so so if this was an impact and 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 we had sandstone which most of that is michigan sandstone uh if that was ejected from that location it would have gone into orbit solidified and then came back down on the other side of the planet one of the guys that's working on this is um tim harris uh, here's Tim right here. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim is an engineer. Uh, he he used to work for Lockheed Martin and uh, and uh, Boeing, um, and some of his mentors were like literally rock. Oh, he's a rocket scientist himself, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of his mentors were like the rocket scientists during the Cold War, and uh, they use the same impact physics for like ballistic missiles uh, wow. to to track where we find these tektites all the way back to their source. And and he's been putting out papers left and right. Um, but they just don't get taken seriously.